I came here to to talk and meet with many of the women of uh, women's organizations, but on the other hand, to with uh, young women and uh, that were in the Tahir Square to hear about their experience, to 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 understand better what was going on here and how women were getting involved in the process of constructing um, um, a democratic transition. Our task is to help in making progress on gender equality and women's empowerment. I had the opportunity in my first visit to speak to the Egyptian government. From my point of view, as a former president of the Republic and as a, somebody who, who was witness and was part of the transition to democracy in Chile, that uh, I, as I could see, there was two big challenges. One challenge was to make all the institutional, political, uh, I would say, reforms that would lead to a very to a society who can ensure human rights to everybody. Democracy was not only about voting, it's about pluralism, about inclusiveness. And in that sense, democracy has to be written with women's and men's hands, would not be uh, a complete democracy. So that was the first challenge that I thought it was important to move on. And the second challenge, of course, is that democracy has to deliver. So social justice, concrete results on, on the revolution was very important for people. People have needs and they really want to see the achievements of the revolution that you have made. If there's any issue that women want me to raise with the government and I have the opportunity to do it, I will do it. But of course, anything that I will do, I will have the, the, the enough information and, and evidence so I can really speak seriously. Um, in, when I came in March, I was, there were some issues they already mentioned in that time. One was that uh, on the 8th of March, women that were uh, celebrating International Women's Day were assaulted by other women and men in Tahir Square. It's clear that it's not an easy issue. And it's clear that uh, things are happening because some people are threatening women activists on women's rights. And this is, I have to tell you, the story of the world. What women need to never forget is that unity gives strength. That if one woman speaks, maybe they'll make her shut up. But if many women speak the same message, this message will be heard. Chile was a very machist country. And it took a lot of years until they had a woman president. It was not like the next day after the, the political change, not at all. In, as a matter of fact, it took 16 years from when we recovered democracy until I was president of the Republic. M women movements, we, we were part of the struggle against the dictatorship. We were in clandestinity. We were in political parties. Women were very active uh, behind the dictatorships. Women were in jail. Women were killed. And so women were part of that. But of course, when we recovered democracy, it was not immediately. It was not that uh, today was remembered in the first cabinet, it was only one woman in the cabinet. 28 countries in the world that has more than 30%. And that's the minimum critical amount of female that should be in Parliament in terms of ensuring that the laws really improve women's rights and women's equality. For the 28 countries in the world that has already achieved this, uh, 25 or 23 needed quota law. For example, the, the country has, has more female in Parliament, Rwanda. Rwanda, 55% of parliamentarians are women. If a country does not understand the powerful that it is to them to give women opportunities, they're losing half of their capacity. Mm -hmm.